Hello architects and developers and welcome to another video in this Patterns of Event Driven Architecture series. In this video series so far, you've been learning an awful lot about events. And events are obviously at the core of an event driven architecture, but they are just a subset of a much wider type of communication. And that type of communication is messaging. And I want to give a really big shout out to one of my colleagues at AWS, Rajit Banerjee, who actually prompted me about this saying, events are great, but what about the other types of messaging. So let's talk about that today because it's really important. Messaging is the overarching group that covers all of the methods of communication between the different services in your system. Parts of your application pass messages to each other to get work done. These messages could be passed inside a single process. You're calling a method and passing some variables to that method. They could be synchronous, passed over the HTTP connection, or they could be completely asynchronous, passed around through queues, messages, and buses. And that might make you think, why the heck should I care, James? Why should I care about these different types of messages? I want to build an event-driven system. All I care about is events. And that's a pretty reasonable place to be. We are in a series on event-driven architecture, after all. Focusing all your effort on building with events and making every single component and system interaction based on an event it's hard. It's possible, but it's hard. Somehow, somewhere in your application, you're going to need a different type of communication. And that is really, really important to understand because when you do need something different, what exactly is it you're going to reach for? And that's where these different types of messaging come in. And there's primarily three different types of messages you're going to see, and they are commands, queries, and events. Let's start with queries, as these are typically pretty easy to understand and relatively familiar. An important thing to point out at this point, though, is that all three of these message types can work in a completely asynchronous, non-blocking way. Events are obvious, of course. You publish an event and something might choose to react to that. But it's also possible to make commands and queries fully asynchronous as well. And you're going to learn about that as you cover each different type of message. So queries. Queries are all about retrieving data or information. I want some information that another service has, or maybe my front end needs a piece of data. You have your front end application over here. And this front end application is showing all of the orders for a given customer. And over at the back end here, you've got your orders back end. Your front end application is going to need to ask your order service for that information. Hey, give me all of the orders for James, please, Mr. Order Service. And the order service is going to respond with that data. I can issue that query over HTTP. In HTTP speak, this would typically be a get request, a HTTP get. And queries are almost always built in this synchronous way. And that's because by their nature, they normally need to be blocking. Just think about it for a second. If your front end needs to show all of the orders for a given customer, for James, well, until that UI screen loads all that order information, everybody is blocked. The user sat in front of the computer is blocked. Everybody needs that information to respond. So making that a synchronous blocking piece of communication kind of makes sense. But this doesn't always have to be the case. You can make queries asynchronous as well. And you're going to learn more about callbacks in a later video in this series. But here's how this can work just for the purposes of this video. So let's imagine a slightly different scenario now. You've got an order service and that order service needs some information from the customer service. And you want to prioritize asynchronous message-driven communication. So instead of that same scenario where you're going to call that service directly, instead the customer service may just expose some kind of endpoint. And that endpoint might be a queue. It might be a topic. But it's not going to be the actual business logic sat behind an API. And that way your order service can send the query onto this, let's call it a queue for the purpose of this video. So the query gets sent onto the queue and then the customer service can choose to actually pick up that query request as and when it needs to. The customer service goes off, makes a query to its database, pulls down the information from the query. And then how does it communicate back to the order service? Well, in this original message that's sent to the queue, the order service will have included some kind of return URL. 
that return URL could be another queue. It could be a topic. It could be an actual HTTP request. So that way, when the customer service finishes doing its work, it's got the data that's needed, it can then send that message back to the return URL. And then the order service can pick up and it can go on its merry way. Now, of course, this isn't going to work for all scenarios. And in a lot of cases, building queries in this way is probably going to be less efficient and optimal than just making a direct HTTP request and getting a response. But it's good to know that you've got these kind of things in your toolbox. You can do queries in an asynchronous way. So let's move on now and talk about commands and events. And commands and events are very, very interlinked. They're typically both related to the mutation of data, of things changing. Really, the difference is just one of intent. I can tell you all to do something, or I can inform you about something that has happened. I could say to you all, hey, go and watch this YouTube video now. Or I could say, hey, this other YouTube video exists, and you can choose to go and watch it if you want to. And in a lot of cases, events happen off the back of commands. Think about it for a second. You've got a front-end application, and that front-end application submits an order to your back-end application. The back-end application receives that submit order command. It does a little bit of work, maybe it does some processing, and then after all that's done, it's going to publish our order created event onto some kind of event bus. And this interplay between commands and events is, at least in my experience, typically one of boundaries. No matter how hard you try to make everything asynchronous and non-blocking, somehow, somewhere, you're going to need some synchronous communication. Whether that's like in this scenario, where you've got a front end calling a back end, or whether it's in another scenarios where you've got multiple services inside your application talking to each other. It's at these boundaries where commands make an awful lot of sense. The front end application in this case is going to make that submit order request, and the front end application is going to want to wait until the point in which it knows that request has been received. The users using your front end aren't gonna to wanna to go off and do a whole lot of other things until they know that that order has actually been submitted. The front end is going to block, although it might not feel like it in the browser as a user, that is blocking until the back end responds. And of course, that same mechanism I described above for doing asynchronous queries can also apply for asynchronous commands. If you have two back end services that need to communicate, and the order service needs to tell the loyalty point service to actually add some loyalty points, it could do that directly. It could send that command directly to the loyalty point service, or the loyalty point service could expose some kind of queue or topic. The order service sends the command there, add loyalty points, and the loyalty point service can choose to work off the back of that. And again, you could use that return URL that you talked about earlier, or the loyalty point service could just go off and publish an event onto an event bus. Loyalty points added, loyalty points failed, whatever that might be, and your order service can choose to consume that event. So when you think about the API that your service exposes, think about what you want that API to actually be. That could be a synchronous API layer, a HTTP API or a gRPC or something like that, but it could be something that's blocking so the order service makes the call and the response come back. That API could equally be a queue or a topic that people can send messages to and you can then choose to react to them asynchronously. And then events, of course, we've talked a lot about already in this series. So I'm not going to dive too much into them now. Just know that there is typically a really tight interplay between commands and events. In most cases, events are going to be triggered from commands coming in at the boundaries of your system. That might be a positive event in that an order gets submitted and you raise an order created event or in a negative event context. In the case of the submit order command gets submitted and the message fails for whatever reason and you get an order failed event. And of course, events might end up triggering other events. That idea of boundaries is a really interesting one here. The boundaries of your system is typically where you will see more commands. And once you get inside the interplay between different services inside your application, that's where event to event communication typically becomes more powerful. But just think about these different patterns and processes as you are building out your event-driven systems. Don't focus single-mindedly 
on making everything event-driven, know that you have these other tools in your toolbox that you can pull out if necessary. I hope this has helped clear up the different types of messages you might see and give you that possibility to step out from making everything event-driven if you need to, but still allowing you to focus on non-blocking communication as the priority. Thanks everyone for listening. I will see you all in the next video.